Jam friends and welcome to Zazumi. I'm Sherry Barbera and today we are talking about what to charge for your NFTs. How do you figure out the price that you need to be successful with your NFTs? Over 50%, this is an interesting statistic, over 50% of all NFT sales are below $200, averaging out at $150. I'm talking about initial price. This is not secondary sales, this is initial price. And there is a big difference between your mint price and your secondary sales. Now, with that in mind, let's get off Mr. However. This can vary from platform to platform, and by platform I mean marketplace, hugely. For example, on OpenSea, the average price is $500, whereas on Mintable, where it's more about one of ones, the average price is $900. So this should give you a good starting idea of where I'm going with this. Top selling generative, and by this I mean created, so first the artist creates the artwork, then it gets put into software that generates a 10K project or a 1K project or a 5K project, thousands of NFTs based on the original artwork, CryptoPunks being one of the most coveted <laughs> of NFT generative art. This CryptoPunk, for example, sold for $7.6 million. So things, things can be quite astounding in this when you're talking about a single piece of art one of the highest selling ones ever was by beeple the artist beeple called every day is the first five thousand days sold for 69.3 million dollars not on a marketplace sold at an auction and that is also another way that you can sell your art how do you determine the price for your nfts you first want to start with your research. You want to research all of the different marketplaces that you, specifically you, might want to put your NFTs. Research your competition, research what buyers are willing to offer. What do I mean by this? For example, with market data, go to the marketplaces. Look at the floor price of NFTs in the same and contrasting genre of whatever your NFTs will be. This is how you will quickly learn, write them down and then average them out. You'll quickly learn the average price, the average floor price of NFTs in your genre. Now that is not the same as the mint price. The mint price is the initial price. It's the first time your NFT drops it's the first time it is priced, and this is the most important price that you will have, your mint price. And you want to research the mint price of those same NFTs. First, you see the floor price. Now go back online and research what was the initial or mint price for this piece of art or this collection. This is a quick way to learn the average mint price. You want to list all of those and then total them and average them based on how many of them you came up with your competition and by competition i just mean someone who is creating something similar to whatever it is that you're creating and i don't mean broadly so for example if someone is doing nft photographs and you are doing NFT photographs, that's way too broad. That's not competition. That's just someone within your same vertical. What you want is someone doing similar type of content that you're doing. If you are doing photographs of petroglyphs, and I know someone who does that, then you want to look at people who are photographing Native American art, for example. If you are doing artwork that is generative and perhaps it's all based on bunnies then you want to go and look at other people go into OpenSea, type in the word bunny see what comes up what are people doing perhaps that is similar to you maybe your genre is a specific type of comedy you want to go and see are other people doing that and then 
what is their following? Go and, and enter the name of that collection with an at symbol and see if they have a Twitter following, if they have an, an Instagram following. Why would you do this? Following is an indication of how successful their project might be. Now, I have a caveat on that. Can I pop over to us for a you second? Can. Okay, I have a caveat on following because there are bots and those are robots that people send through the internet to create false followers. And you may look at someone's following and say, oh my God, they've got 50,000 followers. How could I possibly compete with them? And yet there's no engagement, there's no commenting, there's no interaction. And that is a clear indication that those aren't real. And a way to find out if the following is real is to go and look, click on following and then go look at some of those followers. Who's following them? Are they engaging with them? Are they interacting with them? And if they are, then if those are real followers, maybe this person is not actually posting content to engage with people enough to start building up a really vibrant community. This happens. So there are caveats to just looking at following. Who's Caveat. here? Okay, Rob, hello and welcome. Good morning, great to see you, Rob. Dale is here, GM, wonderful to see you, Dale. Wonderful to see you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna quick go back, look at their social platforms, look at the sales. You can find that information right on the marketplace. How many sales they've had right at the top of their collection. It will say, or they're one of one, it will say how many sales they have, what the history is, how frequently their NFTs are selling, the marketplaces that they sell on. This is another thing that you want to find out for yourself in order for you to know what are marketplaces that would be good for your collection or your one of ones. And finally, who are their buyers? Who are their collectors? Not the same. Buyers and collectors are two different sets of people. And who are their followers? Those are three different sets of who. And you wanna know who all of those are because buyers might just buy as an investment and flip in the secondary market. Collectors might be buying to HODL, H-O-D-L, hold on for dear life so that as the prices go up and up, they're just going to be more and more valuable. And maybe in the future they'll sell, maybe not, but these are people who you want because they are also valuable and extremely important in buying additional NFT pieces. And then followers. Followers may not be ready to purchase yet, but that doesn't mean they won't in the future as they start to understand NFTs better. So you want to understand all three of these sets of who's, buyers, collectors, and followers. When you're doing your competitor research, you will start to understand who your own target audience is, how much they'll actually pay for similar NFTs to your own? What are their spending habits? Do they purchase, when there's a mint, do they purchase just one or do they purchase five? Do they purchase 10? How many of the NFTs of yours would they be willing to purchase at one time? These are the things that you want to know. What is their buying history, these particular buyers? Do they buy frequently? Do they buy once a week, once a month? What are the other NFTs that they are purchasing? And then finally, are they the kind of person who supports and promotes the NFTs that they've purchased and or the collections that they've purchased? Because these are super valuable people for you because they will help sell and promote your collection or one of one as well. And this is why it is massively important for you to do the research. Questions on the basics of pricing. Let me know in the chat or let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna keep at it. If you are doing a one of one collection or editions of NFTs, which are very similar because these are not generative, this is either, I'm gonna to go to us for a second, honey. This is either you creating one piece of art 
and that could just be something that you only sell one of and you'll never make another one it's just one piece of art or like a printmaker you create one original piece of art with a series and then you make multiples one of ten two of ten three of ten four of ten exactly it's an addition of a certain number. You can literally put the addition number, one of 10, two of 10, three of 10, on the artwork itself. Because when, even though they're all exactly the same and they look visually exactly the same, because they're NFTs, they are each one still unique. Why? Because they each have they their each have, own- Wait, wait, let me say. They each have their own uh, uh, what's the, the number? What is it? Exactly. Token ID number. Token ID number. And they each have their own token ID number. Everyone is completely different. It's still completely unique. 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 It's not that it's completely unique. different. Unique. It's I completely got it. I it. unique, I unique. Wait. numerically. <laughs> right. Unique. Unique numerically. And this is the importance of understanding how to price a one of one versus an addition. If you are an artist and you are creating multiples of one piece of art, how do you price it? Is it 10 pieces? Is it 100 pieces? Is it 1,000 pieces? When a fine artist prices their additions, it's different, very different from when they're pricing a painting or a watercolor or a pastel, the one unique original piece. So wait, question. Yes. Would one, would one of 100 cost more than one of 1,000? I mean, if you're going to think about how you price things. Would one of a hundred cost more than one of a thousand? Just, that just popped in my head. I would hope that you would price it, yes, differently. Right. Because be one of a hundred is rarer. More rare. Rarity is the most important thing when it comes to NFTs. Is rarer how rare? Word, rarer? Because yes. it's really hard to say. It sounds like, you know, Helen Keller. Rarer. <laughs> It is a word, like rarer. super rare. Rarer. <laughs> yes, it is a word. Okay. The first thing you want to do is, let me just move me over a teens. The first thing you want to do is build a following. And this is while you are in the behind the scenes, so to speak, creating your one of ones or your edition. You want to start building a following so that you form connections with collectors, so that you form a group that is interested, a tribe of people who want to purchase your NFTs before you list them. There is a very solid reason for this. Number one, you will start to learn what they already buy and what they pay for it. As you meet these collectors and as you interact with them, you will start to see, you go to their social media and look at what are they buying because they will post it on their social media. Wait, wait, you have a question. Yes, let me go to Oz. Yes. So. <laughs> yes, Colombo. <laughs> so they have, so how do they know that you're having, how would they buy a piece, an NFT, before it goes up, before it's posted? How would they know it's there? How would they buy it? How would they buy it? Are you talking about you collectors? Said, yeah, you said a collector could buy a piece before it gets posted. How do they do that? Well, a collector can buy a piece Is it like a prior to it get, getting posted. Generally, that happens on being whitelisted for something and also knowing someone privately and personally and DMing them and things like that. Because they become, okay. they become uh, collectors. They're collectors. So Rob said pricing is so subjective subjective exactly until you sell some and have data exactly do you think social media social media marketing creating buzz might be just as important as the artwork yes i think initially it's more important than the artwork more in important. fact in fact you just said and told me that preemptive social media is very important. Very It's like the most important. In fact, important. you have to do that before you actually put up your, your um, NFTs. Yes. Prior to posting your collection, you need to be out there promoting, marketing yourself as an artist, yourself as a creator. If you're not an artist, it's fine. 
promoting yourself as a creator or promoting if you're doing generative your project and or your project both and you want to start building this following and it's massively important to build a following let's it's go like, back um, to the slide it's like billboards oh. and posters like billboards and posters like, yeah you know before before there's a show or before, before the show some sort before of something performance. happens what get have people psyched I, up about it right what have i always said about for example youtube where there are movie trailers right so you create a trailer for your movie to get people excited huh because how else do they know about the movie they the people, don't okay, right they don't yeah, yeah, yeah. okay the people do nft trailers uh, you may be the first. <laughs> you I just, may like, be the first. Think of something really good and well, share it with everyone here. Yes, so, yeah. yes, they do. What about a YouTube video with NFT trailers? Yes, you want to do that for sure. And yes, people are creating sort of trailers, but they don't call them trailers because I think in the NFT world they don't really, they're not really savvy to that whole trailer kind of thing. But yes, you want to market and promote your collection or your one of ones prior to actually posting anything prior to actually dropping anything i want to use the correct terminology here so you drop your art on a marketplace you drop a collection so i can see you're thinking i so love the hard. trailer idea all right <laughs> see what they buy and at what price learn and decide and this is you doing your own research you want to start low you want to build a track record. Now, this is for you as a newish artist, as a person who doesn't already have a following IRL in the real world. If, in fact, you have a following in the real world and your prices are already in the two to three to five thousand dollar range, still, and I use this caveat because the NFT market is totally different. Still, you may want to start slightly lower. On the other hand, this is a great opportunity for you to start building up your presence online with new people in the NFT space who are collectors. And you can show that you have sales in the four to $5,000 range already before you post your NFT collection. This is different from a brand newish NFT artist who is just starting out. And this is who I'm talking about. So start low if you're a newish artist, build your track record. In other words, build up to new higher, higher prices slowly, incrementally. Don't go from 500 to 5,000. Go from 500 to maybe 700 to then maybe 1,000 to then maybe 1,200. This is slowly and incrementally increase your prices over a period of time. That period of time might be as small as six months if you build a quick, rapid following. But if you don't, it might be over a year. The thing about building your following prior to posting, prior to minting, prior to dropping, is that you will then have confidence in sales and that is the most important thing for you is to have confidence in being able to sell your art when you post it because this ensures that people believe the value of your nft so ideally ensure a buyer is ready to purchase your first nfts before you list them build up that following Alternatively, because there's always alternatives to everything, aren't there? <laughs> Let your buyers decide in an auction. And there are popular one-of-one -one platforms, mainly who only allow auctions. Some of them are now allowing you to list with a, with a set price, but super rare. Foundation, Nifty Gateway, and Known Origin, they only basically now only have auctions although some of them are allowing you to sell outright at a specific set price. And the reason why it's good to do an auction is because the starting price of an auction is set by you. So how do you determine what that should be? Well, it should be no lower than you'd be willing to sell the same exact piece of art in real life. Yes. One moment. Yes. Okay. Auctions. 
So is there, are there auction houses for NFTs? Well, those sites, Nifty Gateway, Mintable, Super Rare, they have an Foundation. Auction section? It's not that they have an auction section. That is how you sell. Oh. You sell in an auction. Oh. Yes, you cannot actually, although some of them are switching over to both right now, you cannot just list it with a set price. Well, that's right. I've seen you putting bids on NFTs. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. So okay. you, you are seeing what the market will bear. In other words, you are listing your NFT at a, at a certain price, and then you want to see what the market will bear. If it doesn't sell at all, it's too high. If you get multiple bids and the price just keeps going up and up and up, fabulous. So and you, you could set the minimum bid that there's no minimum bid set by exactly. the platform. No. It's up to you. You can set the minimum bid, okay. which is fantastic. You can also set a royalty, which is fantastic. So in the secondary market, you will still be able to make money as opposed to IRL in real life where you can never do that. And the secondary market is just, it could, it could be bonkers and the piece that you sold for $500 could end up being $50,000 in the secondary market and you don't get a penny. However, with NFTs and the NFT marketplace, you do. And, and this is extremely valuable for artists. Auctions give you a range of prices for your NFTs. This is another valuable thing about an auction. It gives you knowledge on what collectors and buyers will pay. It provides information about them. As people bid, you can then click, you can then click on their wallet address, go look at what have they bought? How much did they pay? You can find out so much information. This is a completely different world where you can find out a ton of information. But in about the same people. respect, they can find out about you. Yes, yes. In the same respect, they can find so out about you. If you're watching other people, other people are watching you. Always. Well, that's that's true in any case. Yes, but it's right. much more transparent. Much more transparent in the NFT slash crypto world than because it is because it's facts and figures and it, it's about. But, but also inside. everything that happens on the blockchain is a transparent transaction. Uh, and you can see what people paid and you can see when they paid for it and you can see where they bought it. You can see And everything. ironically, what happens on the blockchain stays on the blockchain. <laughs> As opposed to Vegas. <laughs> right. So I guess it's Usually sort of Vegas, like... Vegas, that's a good thing, but that, blockchain... Well, not that's so, so funny because it's kind of like Vegas. Yeah. The blockchain is Vegas, the right? The reverse. Now, surprises might happen. You might get higher than expected offers. It might be that when you start out, you may think that your floor price, your first mint price is $250. You may end up selling that one of one for $2,500, 10X what you thought you were happy with. <laughs> What happens now is you can list your NFTs at a higher price. On marketplaces like OpenSea, you can literally list them at that price. And when you do that, you want to be sure that you share this on social media. You want to say this buyer or collector bought your NFT at this price. Yes, actually at this price because it identifies and solidifies the perceived value of your NFTs. And when you are a basically new or newish artist to the NFT marketplace, nobody knows what your value is. You may know what your value is. Buyers in real life may know what your value is, but the NFT marketplace does not know. And this helps to solidify, yes, this was sold, to this person at this price, on this day in this marketplace, are you promoting that collector? Yes, isn't that awesome? Are you promoting that marketplace? Yes, you are. So should you be using the at symbol of the marketplace? Absolutely, because they want to see that. Should you be doing hashtags of that? Absolutely, because again, massively important for all of this synergistically to work together to build a following for you. 
Inventory, let's talk inventory because pricing and inventory, right? That's a marriage. If you're doing one of ones or addition sales, buyers need to be convinced that you're legitimate. So don't list only one or two NFTs or one addition of 10. Don't list too many unsold one of ones or additions because you want to showcase your creativity and value. Buyers need to be convinced. Collectors need to be convinced. This is why you need to start with getting a following. You need to start with finding collectors. You need to start with ensuring that you're gonna have a buyer when you drop your first NFT. And even if it's your mom, let's hope she has a different last name from you, okay? So even if it's your mom, or let's say she's got, you know, a generic name for her wallet, which is the best thing to do. Even if it's your mom, even if it's your cousin, even if it's your best friend, who cares? Get someone to buy, get someone to invest in you so that there is proof, not only on the marketplace, but social proof that you are legit, that your NFTs have value. That is massively important. If you are doing an addition, multiples of one piece, the more copies or NFTs in one edition, the lower the price. Fewer multiples, higher price, rarity. Rarity, rarity, rarity. Get that in your head. The most important thing price-wise is rare because everybody wants something rare. An edition of 10 is priced lower than a one of one, than one. An edition of 1,000 is priced lower than an addition of 10. And it just makes perfect sense. Now, how can you increase the value even of a multiple? You can by adding utility. And utility is just what else am I buying besides this collectible piece of art that I could resell on the secondary market? What is it that is going to provide your buyer or collector with higher value than simply the piece of art. Well, it could be a higher quality file format in unlockable content. And I covered unlockable content when I was helping you learn how to set up your profile page on OpenSea. And unlockable content is the utility that you will be giving your buyer slash collector when they purchase your NFT. You can offer custom resolutions so that they can use it for wallpaper on their computer or print it out because maybe they want to frame it. Or maybe you even make the price higher and when they buy the NFT, you actually provide them with a print. You mail them a print. So these are the kinds of things that you can do. You can include access to exclusive commissions. You can include real life or online events that you're hosting. You can even include discounts, some kind of a coupon on merchandise or products that you are making from your collection. And that is value. So for example, V Friends, which you have heard me talk about multiple times, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, created a collection called V Friends. And they are basically utility. The utility incentivizes someone to buy at a higher price. In other words, he says this token, NFT, non-fungible token, is verifiable for admission to an event, VCon, for three years, 22, 23, and 24, plus this token is a collectible. In other words, it can be sold on the secondary marketplace for more money. And what does that actually look like? Well, for example, this little thing called an ambitious angel, there were 40 of these made and the information on them is hard to read so I'm going to show you closer. There were 40 of them, all 40 sold. The average price of the sale was 3.06 ETH. What is that in US dollars? $8,800, yes, $8,000. $800. Now, keeping in mind, this is admission to three years 
of a real life event called VCon. If you divide that by three, let's say it was $9,000 basic, you're, you will be paying $3,000 to attend VCon every year for three years. And then you can sell your ambitious angel as a collectible on the secondary market and maybe just recoup the entire $8,800 that you spent. You can price your NFTs higher than your competition with utility because buyers get more value from the purchase. And this is what you really, really want to think about. Can you add any kind of utility to your NFT? If so, make a list, what could it be? And then start to add that in. Think about how you can add that in. Even think about promoting that on your social media that your collection will have this kind of utility when it drops, when it is mintable. So if anyone is interested in learning more, you know, maybe DM me so that you can learn more, et cetera, et cetera. Make a website, get, get multiple ways for people to learn about you and your collection. Research your competition's prices for one of ones or edition NFTs so that you understand the marketplace, the buyers, the collectors, what the actual best price is for your specific NFT. And as I just said, that varies based on who you are, what your art is, who the collectors are, what they're looking for. There are so many factors. So there isn't just one way to price anything, but I hope I've given you a good basic understanding, a lot of knowledge about how to price single pieces of art NFT or limited edition collections of NFTs. So are there questions about that? If so, put them in the chat, put them in the comments and for now, I will keep going until I see those. NFT pricing for a generative collection. This is what most of you want to do, a generative collection, not all of you, but most of you. The number one factor on the success of your project is your initial price, the mint price. That is the number one factor that affects your pricing. And the reason I know this is because there was an article written on the top 150 NFT collections on OpenSea Marketplace. And my knowledge is based on this minting data. Pros to a higher initial price if there is enough demand. What I mean by if there is enough demand, do you have a following? How many people are in your following? How active is your following? Have people already to say, Okay, here's, here is something, this is a little bit of lingo, when mint, W-E-N, when mint. <laughs> That's what NFT buyers, collectors say, when mint. So you need to know what is the lingo for this that people will be saying to you for your collection or for your one of ones, when mint. This is what you wanna hear. This is the gold that you want coming into your ears, when mint. And that is one of the things that you look for. And Rob said, any examples of recent launches that caught your attention? There are, oh my gosh, there, there is a recent launch. Yes, um, very recent, like in the last two or three months called Dower, D-O-U-R, Ducels, D-O-U-C-E-L-S. And when I first saw them, they looked like minions. They've got this big giant eye in the center of them and they're, they're very, very simple. And they, they launched at a pretty decent low original mint price. And I was still getting to know what was happening in the NFT market. Didn't jump on it, which I had, because their price has skyrocketed. And Dower Dursells, that's one of the ones that you want to look into. Yes, that went nutso. There are quite a few of them, Rob. So I'm going to go over some of them on the slides. Great question. Thank you. One of the reasons why you want to price a little bit higher for a generative collection when you're first posting is to get more revenue up front. Why would you do that? Well, to pay off people, of course, because you will have in a generative project, hopefully, a team. The person who's doing your smart contract, which is massively important, I hope you saw what recently happened with, I think it was called Aku Dreams launch. Oh my God, it was horrifying. They lost $34 million 
in their contract because the contract said stop allowing what, what they called refunds at this point. And whoever wrote that into the contract, like totally screwed up the contract. And so the way the auction worked for that was that you started at a higher price. It was like a Dutch auction. You started at a higher price. And then as the price dropped and stopped, that was the final mint price. And anyone who had paid higher, they had agreed, the team had agreed to refund the difference. Well, whoever wrote the smart contract locked those funds. And so they were not able to do all the refunds, number one, which meant people paid a whole lot more than they should have, which stinks. And number two, the team was locked out of the funds to pay them and whatever utility they had added in. And this is why smart contracts are unbelievably, incredibly important. And so on your team, you need someone who really, really understands how to write a smart contract and then you should get it audited to make sure it is a good audit. And Rob said, um, on the great lucky chance that there is some interest in your collection, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Would you hold back some of the collection for a later secondary release? That is an excellent, excellent question. And that can be done in the smart contract. This is why it is so important for you to have a person who can write that smart contract that understands how to make that happen. You as a person will not have that computer um, language understanding, the smart contract language understanding to know how to put that into your own smart contract. Yes, you can do that. You can make it so that 500 drop first, then the next 500, then the next 500, on a certain series of days. You can make a thousand drop or 3000 drop. So yeah, you definitely do need to know how this works in your smart contract. That's a great question. Thank you, Rob. Let's get back to it. With a higher price, more revenue is generated up front, but the cons to a higher initial price, again, if there's enough demand and you need to have your following already built, is that a higher price dampens the secondary market for your first buyers. And that is not great because the, the impact of secondary sales, number one, is for you, for royalties, and number two, is to keep the momentum going. And momentum is everything when it comes to marketing and sales. If the momentum lags, if the momentum stops cold, that's horrible because then it means it's going to take a really long time and a ton of promotion to get people excited and interested again. And therefore you really want to be sure as a creator of your project that you can receive royalties from the secondary sales because often those are what are going to make you rich. <laughs> okay. It's not the initial mint. It's the secondary sales benchmarks and takeaways from the data that I saw. Look at this. 10, 10th percentile, 0.05. That was the average mint price. 25%, 0.069. Median price, 0.086. This is all initial mint price. 75%, 0.2. But look at the 90% that did the best. 0.4. 0.4 was their initial mint price. Number of minting addresses means how many people purchased. 6,000 versus 900. 6,000 versus 1,400. 6,000 versus 2,900. Does the initial price matter? Yeah, <laughs> it really, really, really matters. What else do we want to know? How many NFTs did they mint this one address? Well, look at this. In this particular price, 0.05, not even two. Most of them purchased one. Most of them purchased one NFT as opposed to, in the 25, almost all of them purchased two. But in the median, almost all of them purchased three of a generative collection. And if you didn't know that people purchase multiple NFTs in a drop, now you know 
this is the lowest price people will ever be able to get your NFT at. 75% six NFTs, but look at this. At a 0.402 initial mint price, there were 6,300, almost more than 6,300 addresses purchasing almost nine, almost nine NFTs. Look at the dollar sales, 900 compared to 9.9 million. 900 compared to 9.9 million. Why does price matter? Look at how important this is. You might want to go back to this page and look at this information. Benchmarks and takeaways. NFT collections with min prices greater than 0.25 ETH have rarely achieved returns greater than 10X. Okay, so what I've just told you is that a huge amount of people bought NFTs at 0.4. But the bad thing about that is that they didn't 10X in secondary sales. It isn't just that simple, is it? When I give you information, you need to know the whole picture. And this is why it is so massively important to research. Only two collections succeeded in 10Xing and even more than 10Xing their initial mint price. Who do you think those were? Well, it's no big surprise. Azuki Zen was the first one. The average mint price of 0.94 ETH, in other words, almost $2,700 for one Azuki. Now this is a game. Azuki is a game. And therefore they had a massive millions of followers already. People chomping at the bit to buy these NFTs. They launched this January, January 12th, 2022 at 0.94 ETH. Today, the floor price, that's the lowest price. That is the lowest price that you can buy an NFT for from their collection is 25.25 ETH or $72,000 for one. Get out of that here. That is the lowest price, but keep in mind, this is a generative collection. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of these NFTs. Whoa. I'm gonna go over to us for a second. So. What does that mean in terms of secondary sales? Those people made massive amounts of money on royalties. Why are royalties so important? You do not have to be greedy. You can have literally 0.25 or, or wow. yeah, 0.25%. You can do, you know, 5% royalty. You can do a quarter percent royalty. You can do an 8% royalty. You decide, you decide. On OpenSea, I believe it goes up to 10%, but you decide what the royalty is on the secondary sales of your NFT. And when you are selling thousands of them, the secondary sales income for you is incredible. Wow. Is incredible. And this is why having utility added to your NFTs, in their case, a game, because their NFTs they can use in the game is so important and so your nfts can go into syndic syndication is what you're saying in a sense in a sense okay. <laughs> you're so funny <laughs> the next one is and rob this is one you know keep look at the date on this look at the date on this february 23rd 2022 invisible friends i love invisible friends so much that this is such a fun collection it's animated. The friends are walking. Some of them are walking a dog. This guy is flipping a basketball on his finger. There are all these things that the invisible friends do and they're invisible like the invisible man. So all you see is clothing and accessories, which I think is hilarious. And they sold when they launched February 23rd, 2022 at a fixed price of 0.25 ETH. 0.25 ETH right now is about $700. Okay, so they launched. None of these are low prices, keeping in mind, but they had a huge following already. Today, hmm. the floor price is five ETH. Floor, that's $14,000 for one of these, but that is floor. If you go to OpenSea and you look at what the highest price is, it's gonna blow your mind because these things are selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The rarer ones are hundreds of thousands of dollars. But you dollars. have to build up your following. But you have to build your following and you have to include rarity in your generative project. 
Okay, next. And note, if you want to calculate what is Ethereum to US dollars, go to this link. And I might put that in the description below this video as well as a hot link. But here, you know, you can pause this and screenshot it. TotalCalc.com calculator Ethereum to US dollar conversion. And you will find out quickly what is the actual US dollar price. Or if it's not euros, you want to find out euros, then it would be ETH to euros. Or if you want to find out Bitcoin to US dollars, whatever you want to find out, you can find out there. In the top 150 NFT collections in terms of sales. And this is what we really care about, right? Are they selling? Look at this. Top sales where mint priced were were min priced from 0.05 to 0 0.1, 0.05 to 0.1 Ethereum. And that is based on the data. So less than 1x returns. Look at this. Less than our 1 to 2x returns, 2 to 5x returns, 5 to 10x returns, more than 10x returns. Look at this. If the initial min price was between 0.05 and 0.1, Ethereum, the secondary sales, secondary sales, not the original mint, but the secondary sales more than 10 x the original mint price. Wow. And this is what wow. you want to think about when you are pricing your NFTs, because look at the difference in every single one of those compared to this. This is massively different. I know I'm using the word massive a lot. This is incredibly, enormously, hugely different from this, 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 and this. And I hope you are understanding why this happens. So these included high profile projects like, of course, Board Ape Yacht Club. Board Ape Yacht Club launched last year, last April. Their mint price was 0.08 ETH. What is that? $231 in today's pricing, $231. I don't know what ETH was in April of 2021. You can look it up, <clears throat> but that is not super high, right? $230 today. The floor price, this is the lowest price, is 146 ETH or $418,000 <coughs> for one board ape. And that is the lowest price. The highest prices are multiple millions, millions and millions for one rare board ape. Incredible, right? So that is in a little bit, you know, a year. In just a year, this has happened. Have no words. Another one is World of Women. World of Women launched July of 2021. So a little less than a year ago, their mint price was 0.07 ETH which is a little bit more than $200 today. The floor price, that is the lowest price that you can purchase one of these for is 7 ETH or $20,000. But the rare ones, the collectible ones, the highest price ones are hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions. And you could have bought it at the mint price of 0.07 and people bought multiple multiple NFTs at those prices. Your mint price is your best lever. And that's what it is. It's a lever to influence the market dynamics later on in secondary sales. So if you go from a price of 0.02 to 0.2 ETH, it's so much easier in secondary sales than going from 0.5 to 5. And it sounds weird. Like why would that be so much harder? And yet it is. And the data shows it. So look at these tons of sales compared to a few here, compared to a few here. And you can go back and look at that data again, and it will, it will prove to you based on actual figures and facts that that's the way it works. So many projects that raised very little, very little money in the mint, have significant traction in the secondary market. And this is why it is important for you to know where you should price your generative collection. Should it be a low price? What that low price should be? 
What are your followers, your collectors, your buyers going to be willing to pay? What have they already purchased? Do you have questions about that? Let me know in the chat or in the comments below this video. Okay, NFT pricing strategies. Strategies are so important. You want to have really good strategies for getting great prices. So low price strategy as a marketing tactic. What I mean by that is, and this only works if you have built already a large following of supporters on social media. Set a low mint price for your first collection. This will make your early buyers rewarded for their support because they'll be able to purchase a lot. It's a marketing tactic to inspire loyalty. That's what it's all about. And it makes it easier to sell your next collection. And this is one of the reasons why World of Women, when they just dropped, Rob, their second collection of World of Women Galaxy, that's what their second collection is called, and their first collection was 10,000 NFTs, which is sold out. Their second collection, which literally just dropped maybe a week ago, 20,000. They, they minted 20,000 NFTs. The first 10 were for their original buyers to thank them. So everyone who was in an original buyer or a secondary buyer of a World of Women got a free Galaxy NFT. Now they own two, right? Now they have two. But they also minted an extra 10,000, in other words, for new buyers. So 20,000 is now becoming a standard for second collections. It's crazy. It's crazy. And I, I think it's sold out. But you can do your own research and find that out. Selling prices, this is the second strategy. Selling price versus royalties strategy. And I have just talked about royalties quite a bit. This works best for generative projects, not one of one art, because it's not quite the same. Collectible projects are more likely to change hands than a single piece of art, a one of one fine art. Now that is not to say if it's a one of one, but a collectible. In other words, if there are people, I'm gonna just go to us for a second. For example, there are people who will collect sports and they will collect sports no matter what. If you do a painting of Michael Jordan and it's a one of one, but it's a collectible. It's not just a portrait. It's also a collectible portrait. In the secondary market, this could still end up giving you fantastic royalties as it flips hands from person yeah. to person. Therefore, when I say this is best for generative collections with a caveat, it depends upon the kind of one of one that you are creating. Not all things being equal because nothing is equal. Set, you know, in art, set a lower initial price to encourage more people to buy during the mint. Yes. And then bank on making money from royalties. <clears throat> Next strategy, linear price increases. This is the strategy, linear price increases. This is better for one of one art because this helps to get established and prove your value. Starting low, raising the floor price slowly, incrementally, steadily, building your buyer base, working up to higher prices, gaining a steady flow of collectors and buyers. And this helps you helps you so much with growing as an NFT artist and growing a following and selling your artwork. So buyer collector advice. What do buyers want? What do collectors want? Buyers and collectors do not solely look at the price of your NFTs. They may look at many other factors, the artistry, the utility, the quality, the design, how long did it take you to make it? I mean, maybe you spent weeks mm -hmm. making a painting that you have now turned into an NFT. That is the labor involved in doing it. And is it generative versus a one of one or an addition? They look at all of these factors when they're deciding it isn't just one thing. Setting a low price may not mean that you sell. It may not mean that you sell. Arbitrarily setting a high price, it's just not good because you are not gauging the actual value in the NFT market, doesn't matter in real life. 
if you can get that price. Arbitrarily setting a high price in the new NFT market may shoot you in the foot as well. Do your own research, Dior. Make informed decisions, not guesses. There are no definite rules for price. It is all based on multiple, multiple <clears throat> factors. Questions. Are there questions? Please, yeah, please, please. Yes. What are your questions? Okay. Oh. <laughs> yes. <So. laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barbera. You're welcome. So the, um, oh, I'm on all of them. <laughs> yes. So the question was, how do they know how much work you put into it? How do they know? Because you had one of the factors there was how much, how much labor was involved. Okay. Do you tell them? Yes. Do you have it in your... What else would you do? What, what else would you do? Uh, you could make a video. Exactly. You can make a video of you actually doing the process. Yes. Going through the process of making your NFTs. Yes, you could do a time lapse video. You could you could do a BTS behind the scenes video showing you over multiple days working on your NFT or working on your painting. People appreciate it, what they're buying more when they know yes. there was a lot of work put into it. Yes, and that it's real. Yes. If they see you creating the art, right. now they know that you are the creator. If they see you working with an artist who is creating the artwork for your generative project, that is just as valuable because they see that you are building a team and teams are massively important with generative art. All of this is valid. That's a great question. That's a great question because how do you build a following? You build a following by showing the reality of you, the artist, of you, the generative project, of you, the person creating the collection, of what is actually happening in real life. And that is what is going to differentiate also your collection from other collections. It makes it more personal. Yeah, but it also makes it real and then more valuable. Because right. now you are starting to establish what is actually happening. You are starting to establish the fact that yes, I make art or yes, I have someone who makes art. Yes, we're really working. It is a labor of love. It is actually happening. Look at how I'm doing this. And, and that's what people like to see. It's a great question. If there are other questions, let me know. What am I going to cover next? Well, of course, I'm going to cover smart contracts for generative collections because that is incredibly important and of course, <laughs> I wanna know how to do that. <laughs> I wanna know what is involved in these smart contracts. How can you end up creating a smart contract that locks you out of $34 million? It's so horrifying, right? So horrifying. So how does that happen? How can it happen? How can you prevent it? What can you do in your smart contract to be smart? For yourself, for your team, for your buyers, for your collectors and this is why it's called a smart contract there are so many things you can do in a smart contract and that is what i will be covering next in the live stream on thursday next time and you know i love those likes if you haven't liked this video please like it you um, need to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to our channel we are slowly inching up we are now over 500 um followers on YouTube. We're up to 533, which is fabulous. Just keep subscribing. And always our goal is to inspire you, not only inspire you about NFTs and cryptocurrency, but Web3. What is Web3? How do you use it? How do you get involved in it? All of that has to do with NFTs and crypto. And hopefully that is inspiring you come over here, honey, <laughs> to want to be a part of this, to get involved, make your own NFTs, be a part of a project. If you don't want to make your own NFTs, be a part of a project, get on their discord, be a, be a discord manager, learn about whatever. There are so many ways to get involved. You can invest in NFTs. Invest you in can NFTs. Buy NFTs. Yes. Invest and flip them. And flip them. You can learn how to buy them and sell them. Yes, learn and about really learn about business. cryptocurrency. Learn about how you can churn your cryptocurrency to make so much money with that that you can just afford to buy NFTs no problem. And and this is all a part of what we hope we are giving you information about. If there's anything you want to learn that we haven't covered, let us know. 
We can't know unless you tell us. So please let us know in the comments below this video, what do you want to know? Right. What do you want to know? We want to help you with right. that. And eat your vegetables. Eat. <laughs> They're good for you. What? Nothing. I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm... I love vegetables, so I'm fine with that. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so much. When mint for us? Soon, we hope. When mint for us? Soon, we hope. But Sal still needs to build a following. I have over 3,000 people just on my Twitter, but I think between all of my accounts, it's like 11,000 people at this point, which is really amazing. No, we have a plan. Yeah, and so we have a place, plan. And now it's just the work. Yes, we're just working now on it's it. Just so, the work. when mint? Soon we hope. Soon. <laughs> Soon we hope. We hope you'll be a buyer. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you massively. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you Wait, in the next video. Okay.